All right, good morning and once again, and welcome to Ministering Divine Healing course. I uh, hope you all are doing well and I hope you've, uh, this course has helped you understand uh, you know, God's heart for healing and deliverance and, and that he wants to see his children well and, uh, and healthy. Uh, so today we'll continue uh, with, uh, we'll go to chapter 9. We completed chapter 8 in the last class. Uh, just to do a quick recap, we spoke about um, the different, uh, one of the model, a simple model for ministering uh, healing. Right. Just to do a quick recap of it um, is uh, how do we minister healing in one of the model which was developed by John Wimber, uh, the founder of Vineyard Ministries, um, is you begin with the interview process you ask the individual where does it hurt uh, where would you like me to pray for what would you like me to pray for the diagnosis is uh, why do they have this condition the root cause root causes uh, the method selection you choose okay how you decide on how you want to minister uh, to this person either by laying of hands or however right um, the ministry itself, you as you're praying for the individual, you watch what God, what God is doing, uh, and then some post ministry suggestions. Right? Uh, what should they do to keep their healing? The importance of getting connected to a church and uh, and, and and whatnot. Okay, so that was chapter eight, a simple model for ministering healing. Um, now that's only one of the models. It's not the only model. Uh, it's not written in a rock or a stone and saying, okay, you have to follow this model. It's one of the model that's been helpful and it's been successful in, uh, in, in, in many people's lives. Okay. So now we'll move on to chapter nine and uh, yeah, we'll continue from there on. So this chapter talks about gifts of uh, the spirit for manifesting healing and deliverance. Okay, gifts of the Spirit for manifesting healing and deliverance. Uh, it is in your hard copy, it's on page 192. Uh, in your PDFs, it's page 126. Okay, um, so the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, are a simple list of the ways in which the Holy Spirit reveals His presence and power through us as individuals. Okay, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is just a list of sim uh, simple ways through which the Holy Spirit chooses to manifest or reveal His presence or power through an individual. Okay, um, so we all know this: <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is God. And he can manifest himself in any way that he desires, right? Um, Psalm 115 verse 3, you remember, right? He is God. He does as he pleases. So Holy Spirit <clears throat> is God. He is not one-third God uh, or any less. He is God. Right? And he can manifest himself any way that he desires, okay? And it could be be more than this list of nine that we have that we see in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 4 to 11. okay can we just look at it and we'll read through those scriptures uh, first corinthians chapter 12 verse 4 and 11. it says there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit okay the source is the same but there are different gifts of manifestation okay there are differences of ministries but the same Lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same God who works all in all but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. Okay, so you have word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gift of healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit 
works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills okay uh, uh, some more scriptures from first corinthians in 12 31 it says but earnestly desire the best gifts and yet i show you a more excellent way and first corinthians 14 1 is pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy and same chapter verse 12 says even so you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Okay, so we've just understood what the gifts of the Holy Spirit is. We just read through the chapters and then we see that we are encouraged by Paul. He's right in the letter that he's writing to the Corinthians. He's saying, pursue them, earnestly desire them. Okay, and all in the last uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 12, we see that let it be for the edification of the church. Okay, and so the gifts that the Holy Spirit decides to manifest through you is not for you. Okay, the gifts that the Holy Spirit chooses to manifest through you is not for you but it is for the edification of the church it's the edification of the people around you that you may serve them well okay and so one of the gifts that we see uh, is the word of knowledge um, so word of knowledge can uh, anyone in your own words kind of describe uh, what uh, what according to you uh, or your understanding is a word of knowledge Feel free to unmute and share. Anyone? Whatever your understanding is, it's, there's no right or wrong. Okay, so knowledge of God's word. Okay. Um, may I speak? Can I hear you? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Uh, word of knowledge enables us, I mean, through the Holy Spirit, uh, details of a person, maybe something that has happened in the past or present, or what is going to happen, which we would normally not know. Okay. But uh, through the Spirit, we are enabled to have that information about that person. And so, or we uh, can exhort them or, or tell them. So essentially, just as we read now, yeah. to edify them or to warn them or whichever way, whichever way the Holy Spirit chooses to communicate that to us. But we would not normally know it, but through the Holy Spirit, we would have that information right. about people. I mean, whatever is happening in their lives or sure. either past, present or what is to come also. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Nina, for sharing. Yeah, uh, anybody else would like to add to it? Okay. Yeah, um, it's it's exactly what, as Nina mentioned, is uh, so word of knowledge uh, is a piece of divine knowledge that reveals the fact of things uh, past or present of a person, of an individual. Okay. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, it's let's say you're praying or you're ministering and then you get a certain number uh say you you see you you know there's certain digits and you say okay you know 22 7 1, 9, 8, 7, does that make sense to anybody right so the word of knowledge is no right there's the piece of information that another person that you're praying for or anyone you're not necessarily praying for uh, already knows okay um, so that's what the word of knowledge is also. Okay, so the piece of information that you're sharing, the other individual already knows. Okay, so when you come down, when you look at this uh, passage, uh, another portion in your notes, it says different ways God gives um, words of knowledge for healing. Right? Three different ways we see, uh, you know, we, see, we can see it, we can hear it, and we can feel it. Okay, um, so when we look at a seeing, um, oh, again, just let's just uh, pull back a little bit. Coming back to uh, you know the definition or understanding word of knowledge, a couple of examples that I can think of is uh, 
uh, in the Gospel of John itself, where uh, you know. Uh, this, the disciples of Jesus is talking to Nathaniel and saying, you know, uh, there's this Messiah, there's this person, um, you know, he's from a Nazareth. And then Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And then, you know, Jesus finally meets Nathaniel and, uh, and he says that, um, Nathaniel, I saw you uh, when you were standing under the fig tree. Right, and then Nathaniel is all amazed, and uh, one, you know, it's like, wow, how do you know? How did you know this? Right, and so Nathaniel knew that you know where, where, and when he was standing under the fig tree. So he knew that's knowledge, okay. And so Jesus just gave that to him. And another passage that I can think of is from John chapter four, uh, where it talks about the uh, from verse twenty-four that Jesus did encounter uh, with this woman at the well. Uh, and say, you know, go bring your husband. And then she says, I do not have a husband. Um, yes, I know. And also, you know, the five husbands um, that you've had before. And then again, this woman is all amazed and saying, you know, how did you know of this? Are you prophet and whatnot? So, uh, you know, those are some of the examples of giving an individual a word of knowledge uh, that an individual already knows. Okay, um, and so let's just look at some of the ways that God reveals His word of knowledge to us. Okay, one is seeing. Okay, so you could uh, see an image or a motion picture, right, that God is revealing uh, to you, right? Uh, you may see images of a body part or a body parts being restored, like uh, an elbow or a bone or a kneecap or whatnot, right? Or back spine discs and you know an x-ray an image of an x-ray or whatever right so uh, those are certain ways that god can reveal uh, you know his word of knowledge and so we need to recognize what we are seeing understand what god is revealing through these images and then call them out okay so you we need to recognize what god is trying to communicate tell you and then call them out okay so for example if you know you could uh, there was a time uh, this was i was not ministering <clears throat> in healing or deliverance and uh, this is the time when i was in uh uh in in the in, uh, i was part of a band that was leading worship and the worship leader turned back and say and said uh i want you to prophesy with your uh, with your drums i was playing the drums then and uh, and so and I just, as I began to play, I started to see an image of a sunrise, right? And I, and and so as God was revealing that, I was just saying, agreeing, Amen, to what He was revealing with my instrument. And then it later it was interpreted as a new beginning or a new start or a new day dawning in an individual's life. You know, that's one of the images. So. Um, that's one of the ways that God can, uh, you know, reveal uh, His word of knowledge, and the other is hearing. Right? God uses the ears of our spirit and reveals His message to us. It's as simple as that, right? He uses the ears of our spirit and reveals His message to us. And uh, to simply understand this point, it's uh, like the FM radio. You know, have has any one of you seen those old radios or do you still have it you know where you you know you turn those dials and you know you keep dialing 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 turning turning until you find the right frequency uh, to catch a certain channel you, you know what i'm talking about right we've all done that isn't it uh right I, i'm also just reminded of this example where um you know, in, I forget the passage reference, but it's in the book of Kings where Elisha and his uh, helper is surrounded by the army. And, you know, Elisha walks up with his, uh, with, with the servant and then servant sees the army, you know, surrounding them and only, and then Elisha sees that, uh, and he says, don't worry for those uh, with us are greater, are more than those who are surrounding us. And then Elisha prays and he says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see what I am seeing. 
and then God opens his eyes and he sees the chariots of fire surrounding them as protection, right? So um, God is speaking, God is showing uh, all the time and we just need to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, right? Our antennas, our spiritual antennas always have to be up, you know, just you know, uh, leaning into what God is trying to say, what God is trying to do at that moment. Okay, uh, and so there could be so many instances. For example, we may have an impression about a certain kinds of disease being healed. Okay, or people who have been in a certain situation, uh, like a car accident, uh, being healed. And so again, we discern what God is saying and then call these out. Right? Sometimes as you start speaking or ministering, uh, words that you have not planned to say would seem to come out. So just recognize what God is doing and speak those out in faith. Okay, um, So seeing, hearing, and finally feeling. Again, God uses the spiritual sense of feeling to communicate information to us. Okay, um, now... This can seem strange, but then again, he's God and he can communicate in any way that he feels right. right? God can cause sensation or a feeling in some part of our own body that corresponds to what he is doing or wanting to do. Like, for example, and I've seen Pastor Ashish minister this way as well, and so many other pastors, our associate pastors saying, okay, I'm feeling a pain in my left shoulder. Right? A minister would say this, I'm feeling a pain in my left shoulder. Is there anyone here who is having a pain in the left shoulder? Okay, and so that's another way how God releases um, his word of knowledge. Right? Are you following? You I hope you understand what I'm, uh, you know, what, what's being communicated or share, shared here. Okay, so hearing, seeing, and feeling. Okay, so God can speak to us and give us words of knowledge before uh, we are ministering or during the time of ministry. Okay, so he can give us words of knowledge before ministering or during the time of ministry. Okay, um, now how to give uh, words of knowledge? Another set, a few, a couple of guidelines for us to know how to give words of knowledge. Right, uh, how we say what we say is important, right? We try to be simple. We try to be gentle and uh, open about the fact that sometimes we are not sure about what we have perceived. Okay, so it's okay to say, um, I don't know who this is for, uh, and be very simple, very gentle without complicating things. And um, yeah, just just sh just communicating what God's telling you to, to say. Right? So a uh, couple of guidelines is we Avoid using phrases like, thus says the Lord, okay, or uh, God told me, unless we feel this is um, essential to get the person's attention, okay? Um, and so in most cases, we simply say, uh, are there anyone here or is there anyone here uh, who's having a certain condition? And then you just call it as it is and you say it as it is, okay? Uh, we. I, again, it comes to one of the images where it says, you know, you, you are seeing that there's uh, that there's a condition that an individual is struggling with. Let's say, for example, in um, your bottom of the right foot, right? A person is having a problem at the lower part of their right leg. Okay, uh, we don't add any other information that was not shown to this image that you are seeing. Okay, so God is very clearly showing you that there is a problem in the lower part of the right leg. That's all. Now, he hasn't shown you if it's broken or if it's a sprain or a pain or a fracture or anything. So uh, we don't need to add to that. Okay, so you just don't, because you don't seem to fully understand. Um, you only call out with as much as detail as to what is revealed to you. If you only see that, okay, there's a problem in the lower right leg, you just say that. And if there's anybody there, you pray and you declare healing over them. It's as simple as that. Okay. And uh, another thing is we do not get discouraged if people do not respond to your word of knowledge. Okay. Like I said, for example, if there's anybody here, you're feeling this sensation 
in your left shoulder and you ask is there anybody here uh you know who's uh, having who needs healing in the left shoulder and if nobody responds don't be discouraged it's okay right uh, sometimes people are we can be shy to admit or they do not admit to a certain condition either out of fear or embarrassment it's okay right uh, what is important is that you and i are obedient to the voice of god you and i are obedient to declare or to say exactly what he tells us to say or what he's shown us okay um Word of uh, wisdom uh, and every other thing. We're just going to give a little bit of glance of the rest of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure most of you are already, if not all of you, are already aware of everything that we're about to kind of learn. Um, divine wisdom uh, is that is supernaturally imparted to a believer that reveals the mind, purpose, and the will of God to solve a problem. Uh, that is the word of wisdom. Okay, divine wisdom that is supernaturally imparted to a believer that reveals the mind, the purpose, and the will of God to solve a problem. Okay, uh, one of the passages that you can look at uh, that, that I'm reminded of is from Second Corinthians. Uh, sorry, we've used a lot of Corinthians. Second Kings, chapter three, verse fifteen, uh, specifically. Second Kings, chapter three, verse fifteen. It talks about how prophet Elisha calls for a musician to come and play, uh, for him to uh, be able to hear from the from from God. Okay, this is one of those times where he chooses to, uh, you know, he felt like okay. Let's have a musician come and play so I can hear. Now, if you read the entire chapter and the chapter before, uh, the context is that everybody's uh, going through a very hard time, and um, Elisha has to hear from the uh, from from God. Because if he doesn't hear from God, some of the kings are going to die. So he's waiting on God's instructions and guidance. On a certain situation okay and and so and then you know the musician comes he plays and goes and then he hears from the Lord uh, regarding uh, you know uh, uh, he gets a solution and then you know that's that is a word of wisdom where God gives you he reveals the mind his purpose and his will uh, over a problem okay so when he, ministering healing and deliverance the gift of the word of wisdom can reveal uh, the method to use to administer healing to the person. That's one of the examples, right? So, for example, God may reveal that the real cause for person's uh, problem, uh, and you know, which we can then proceed to address and release the person from their problem. Okay, so you 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 know, remember the interview process? You interview, you diagnose it, and whatnot. But there can be times where the person doesn't have to say anything. God reveals everything to you, and then you know you he's diagnosed it for you, and you just declare and release healing over the person. So word of wisdom, okay? And uh, and then we look at discerning of spirits. Now, uh, discernment or the discerning of spirits is very different from spiritual discernment which is an acquired spiritual ability okay i'll say that again the discerning of spirits is different from spiritual discernment which is an acquired spiritual ability okay right so to discern um, now this gift is uh, to discern the source of influence on people so when you say discerning of spirits you you know you're seeking again you're leaning into god's heart to see what he's saying and which the holy spirit again helps you discern the source of influence on people okay so to see what the lord is doing to see what satan is scheming and doing against that individual okay and that is the discerning of spirit so through the gifts of discerning of spirit god can reveal what kind of demonic spirits are operating Okay, um, so through the gifts of discerning, uh, God can reveal what kind of demonic spirits are operating. Okay, and I mean, 
there could be so many things that God can reveal to you uh, through this. So again, this is very important and a beautiful gift uh, that the Holy Spirit chooses to manifest himself through. And then we have the gifts of healings. Right? The gift of healings are, again, released often with... A, the gift of healing is often released through... Uh, it's, al it's released along with a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Um, you know, for example, um, as we call a certain condition out, the person receives the healing. For example, right? I, I'm going back to the left shoulder. Please bear with me. It's just an example. Okay. Uh, I hope nobody has an issue with the left shoulder. <laughs> right. So as you are calling out, saying, "Okay, you know, I feel I feel a sensation of pain in my left shoulder. Is someone here, and you know, they put their hands up, and you declare healing over them, and that person is healed." right there okay and that is the gift of healing another manifestation of the holy spirit choosing to manifest through the word of knowledge through the word of wisdom and then uh, healing the individual okay and uh, working of miracles uh, is another gift of the holy spirit working of miracle causes things uh, such as restoring uh, supernatural Excuse me. A restoring of missing body parts, restoring organs uh, that have been removed surgically, recreating body parts, causing implants to disappear, causing function that is not explainable medically, and other workings that are not natural. Working of miracles. This is beautiful, right? This is so divine. Uh, everything, I mean, all the gifts is so beautiful and so divine. And, but I mean, just think about it right you are praying over an individual and you suddenly you know uh, again the the person that let's say you, uh, you prayed for had a metal rod inserted in their hands and then uh, you declared healing over them and that person goes back and gets it checked and does an x-ray just to figure just to find out that the metal rod has been dissolved completely and they don't have any pain right and then oh there could be another individual that you're praying for uh, and who does not have a kneecap or a broken kneecap or you know a dislocated kneecap um, it, you know and then you pray and then you you see that god just in his wondrous ways uh, restoring and giving a new kneecap for this individual that is working of miracles right uh, there is nothing impossible with him isn't it that right? he can restore he can Restore, uh, you know, any failing kidneys or livers and make it new or just give a new one, new set of lungs, new set of, you know, uh, anything. So those are working of miracles, right? And this is, we, we are talking about the Holy Spirit, right? God, uh, you know, and he can choose to manifest the way he wants to. There's nothing impossible with him because he is power. Amen. Um, so that is working of miracles, and uh, and the other gift that I like to talk about is the gift of faith. The gift of faith, uh, supernatural faith that um, imparts uh, healing, deliverance in situations that we may not have the required faith, uh, you know, for ourselves. Right? There could be a lot of situations, circumstances where you can look at it and say, "Boy, this seems impossible." Uh, how is this going to happen? What are we going to do? Um, right? Um, for example, in telling a person to rise up from their wheelchair and walk, uh, we will we normally will not do this to every person we meet in a wheelchair, right? Uh, but in this in this situation, the Holy Spirit may infuse this kind of faith in our hearts and lead us to do it. right? So the the secret here, uh, the important part here is that he is leading us to do it right the holy spirit is leading us to do it and saying okay ask this individual to rise up and walk and so he's just uh he i mean he is giving you instruction uh and then he's filling your heart with faith right um so the result is always certain in this kind that the person gets healed it's the only result and the holy spirit tells that you know uh, this person is getting healed that person is getting healed 
right? So the gift of faith would also be typically infused in our hearts when God leads us to raise a dead person back to life. It could be the same thing, right? Uh, you know, when you uh, when you see a person who is dead physically, um, it just seems um, like, okay, <laughs> you know, what are we going to do now? And then you hear the uh, the Holy Spirit filling, you know, saying, uh, go and pray and declare life over this individual. And it fills your heart with faith. And then it's up to us to take that step of faith in obedience to what God has just told you to do. And you declare healing. Um, so that is the gift of faith, um, right? Um, is, are you all with me? Any questions um, that you have or any thoughts that you want to share? Okay, all right. Uh, you know, as they say, this. Um, yeah. Okay, Nina, go ahead. Uh, the gift of miracles that is there. Yes. So normally, when I mean, like, it would operate where, like, I mean, does it need to be only in a meeting kind of situation, or, or if we have been praying for a person and. Because it's talking about all creative healings and yes. body parts and all of that, and uh, there is, it's kind of related to faith also because you, yes. I mean, there is a thing saying that you tell a person to rise up, yes, and so this would operate because we are in uh, prayer, or I mean, we would know, I guess, no, that I mean, uh, people who are specially gifted in that area, yes, I just wanted to know how it operates, like like miracles. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, it can happen in a corporate setting. You know, it could be in a room of ten people, twenty people, a hundred, fifty thousand doesn't matter. Uh, or it can happen individually as well. Uh, right. And uh, and I've seen a lot of this uh, working of miracles. For example, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of Todd White. Uh, you know, Todd White is one of those uh, you know street evangelists. Uh, who goes around uh, praying for people, you know, in the streets and and seeing healings uh, and you know working miracles, and uh, there's multiple healings. For example, of uh, where again God gives him this word of knowledge. He walks towards this person, or he he just begins by saying, "Can I pray for you?" Uh, and then as he begins to pray, uh, God reveals, you know, the words of knowledge and whatnot, and then their health condition. It could lead to you know the back and whatnot, um, and then there has been times where you know an individual will say my one leg is shorter than the other leg, and then he begins to pray for them in the street, and then uh, and it's caught on camera where a leg act grows, right uh, to the same length as the other, uh, and uh, it's not just one or two. There's multiple uh, healings like that, and so. Um, yeah, that that's the way uh, kind of God chooses to work. It can work in a corporate setting. It can work, uh, you know, as you just street evangelism uh, individually, or you're constantly or consistently praying for another individual, right? You know, you know, this let's say a person um, unfortunately has something to do with the kidney or whatnot, and you are praying for them earnestly, right? Uh, and you're persevering and you're fighting for them, and then you see God coming and breaking through. Uh, right, and just healing and completely restoring their kidneys or whatever. Uh, and so, yeah, those are the ways uh, God works in miracles. So, and I hope I answered your question. And, and in many ways, you know, most of his gifts, uh, you know, more than one gifts manifest uh, when you're ministering divine healing. Right. Uh, anything else? Okay. Uh, anyone else would like to share or ask anything? Right. Okay. Yes, Nina, go ahead. 
Uh, so the beginning of the working of, I mean, having these giftings, uh, gifts operating in our lives yes. um, is when we seek honestly the best gifts. I mean, does it begin there that we really want to or does it just emanate from, you know, being in a place of intimacy and fellowship with the Lord? I mean, do we yes, purposefully? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think uh anything to really anything related see these are gifts one of the things that we have to remember right we don't it's it's given to us uh right but then we are also encouraged to desire it uh to go after it to pursue it uh and 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 all of this is birthed out of our love uh for god for more of his presence uh, to just build that intimate relationship with him and then he chooses to use you the way he wants to use you and uh, one of the things about uh, that First Corinthians 12, 31, uh, where it says, but earnestly desire the best gifts is, so, uh, and I, again, um, this was taught in one of our weekend school of healing and ministry is the way this scripture was uh, explained is the best gift is a gift that is uh, suited for that, uh, that is appropriate for that particular situation or a circumstance. Okay, so for example, uh, you know, in a given situation, a, a person needs healing. Uh, you know, you are, you know, asking the Holy Spirit for, to work through you to, through healing, right? And it's not it's not enough just to give us a word of prophecy or word of knowledge. So the best gift at that point of time, which is appropriate, is working of miracles. You get what I'm saying? That's just an example, you know. So. But again, it's all born out of uh, intimate uh, walk with the Lord. Okay, and one of the last gifts uh, I'd like to mention uh, mention is the prophecy. Right, uh, gift of prophecy is simply God speaking to man through man. Okay, the gift of prophecy is simply God speaking to man through man. Okay, uh, it could be a combination of word of knowledge and word of wisdom, and a prophetic word is something, you know, talking about the future. Uh, so it is simply a message from God which a person receives and that person communicates. Uh, it could be for a, a corporate or it could be for an individual as well. Right, so. In ministering healing and deliverance, prophecy can be used to bring encouragement, strength, comfort that inspires faith. All right. So, what we need to uh, we need to keep in mind that the gifts of the spirit are usually released in combination with one one another, right? As gift packs, right? Uh, so, while ministering, there may be more than one gift flowing together. All right, so that's what we need to keep in mind. But the last gift that's mentioned is prophecy. What you need to simply understand is the gift of prophecy is God speaking to man through man. All right, um, so that's kind of concluding this chapter, chapter nine. But uh, as we conclude this chapter, uh, what I want to encourage you is, uh, uh, you know, we've come a long way in this course in understanding divine healing and deliverance. Uh, Keep taking that step of faith. Uh, don't have any second thoughts. If you look at a person and think, okay, uh, you know, I want to go pray for that person, don't hold back. Walk up to the person and don't be afraid and ask the person, can I pray for you? It could be a person that you don't that you know or that you may not know. Right? But take the step of faith and start uh, working on everything that you've learned uh, so far. Okay, start putting it into practice. Uh, that's the point of this subject is that you you know begin to uh, exercise it and practice put into practice everything that you've uh, learned. All right. Um, so we'll pause uh, in this. Uh, we'll pause now as we conclude this chapter, and then we'll resume the next session. All right. I'll see you. Take a break.